Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Vincent M. Wales. And before we get started, I want to tell you about the new Psych Central Show Facebook page that we'd like all of you to join. Just go to psychcentral.com slash fbshow, all lowercase, and click to join. We'll approve you. When you get there, look at the pin post. There's lots of cool links and lots of fun stuff for you to do. We hope to see you there. Vin, are you ready to get started? I sure am. Recently, I started watching a, a new show on television that's called Kevin Probably Saves the World. Now you know where we got the show title. The show is basically about a gentleman named Kevin who is tasked by God with picking 35 people to, well, uh, essentially help spiritually guide the world. So Kevin is one of those people, so he's number one, and then he has to pick 35 more people for 36 total people. And this got me thinking, Vin, if I were tasked with picking 35 more people, who would I pick and why would I pick them? Now, obviously, I would pick you. Oh, okay. I mean, the show <laughs> needs continuity and, and you're, you're the host. So if for no other reason than in the new world, the podcast has to live on. I would pick you. So now we're down to 34 slots. So I'm sorry. We're going to be we're going to be basically ruling the world, but we still have time to do a podcast. I mean, listen, I enjoy the podcast and we <laughs> owe it to the fans of the show who may or may not survive the upcoming apocalypse. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, also, we're contractually obligated. So, uh, you know, I take my commitments very very seriously. That's a fair point. All right, so this is, uh, you know, I'm going to start by saying this. This is a series, right? So they've got plenty of time to work out the picking of the 35 people. We have 20 minutes. Right. So can we pick fewer than 36 people, please? Well, what I really want to focus on is not who we would pick. Well, yeah. Uh, because clearly you and I would just pick 34 supermodels and call it a day. And that's, 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 that's very self-serving, but, but listen, this, <laughs> I, I make that joke and, and this is when it's going to become very awkward if my wife actually does subscribe to the show. <laughs> it's a much easier sell for you, Vin, because your, your cats don't have iPhones. The question becomes is how do you pick those 36 people? Forget about the number. It doesn't matter if it's 36 or, or 10,000. The, right. the question that started percolating in my brain is how would I pick these people? And, and this has this has real life ramifications. Let's 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 address that. This is this is how people pick employees, how people pick nonprofit boards, how people pick focus groups. How do you choose the people? For example, right off the bat, do you pick all people who would agree with you? I mean, that would be easy. Thirty six people, they all agree with you. Consensus immediately. You of course, can find thirty six people who agree with you, Gabe. Oh yeah, yeah, easy, <laughs> easy. Easy. Yeah. Well, I think we can shoot that one down right away, can't we? Because it's just stupid to surround yourself with, you know, yes men and women, because what, what if you're wrong about crap, you know? Well, you can't learn anything if you only surround yourself with people yeah. who think like you. I, you and I haven't agreed on anything, and, and we're like besties, and, and we host a show, and apparently we're going to survive the upcoming apocalypse by picking each other. So the, the show moves forward, of course, and, and you know, it's a comedy, it's a drama, there's, there's touching moments, but they haven't really answered the question of how they would pick it. And, you know, let's, let's look politically. For example, should a Democrat pick 36 Democrats? I mean, certainly in that political party, there are people that share the title of Democrat that don't agree with each other. So they would be honoring your focus, Vin, of not picking all yes men. You know, the Democrats don't always agree, the Republicans don't always agree, but should they exclude the entire, uh, an entire political spectrum? I mean, would, would that be expedient? Well, you're, now you're kind of assuming that uh, the people doing the choosing have a particular political view. Right? Well, I have a particular political view. I yeah. am politically awesome. <laughs> so I would pick only awesome political people. Uh, but, you, you know, I, I'm not trying to disclose what my political party is, but should I only pick my political party is really the question. Well, Whether once, it's once again, no. Well, why not? For the same reason, because you know, you you do need a lot of different opinions. And even though 
people of one particular party don't always agree, you're right on that, you don't often get really widely disparate views. This is easy because we have 36. So the first thing that would pop in my mind is we should have 18 men and 18 women. We, we, should, at, we should at least, at the very least, represent both genders equally. Well, but of course, hold on. Hold all on. right. Oh, there's more than the two genders. That's a really good point. So how would you handle that? Well, I think... Do we divide by threes? I mean, you can't do three because there's more than three genders. Y you clearly do have to have a representative of the trans community. A single yeah. representative? Would that well, not be tokenism? Well, yeah, I mean, if we're limiting to the, our ruling party to, you know, 12 people, no, it wouldn't be tokenism. Well, what about if it's 36? Well, I don't, I don't know. If you want to, if you want to be that way about it, then okay, let's get some percentages. Let's say, for example, that we were limited only to men and women. It shouldn't be, you know, perfectly even because there are slightly more women in the world than there are men. Okay. If you want to, if you want to be fair and equal, then you've really got to break everything down to the most accurate percentages that you, that you can get. Okay. So let's say that this new world order is a democracy. And since there's more of one race than another, does that mean that that race will always win? And therefore that race will be the controlling race? I mean, isn't that a problem as well? Actually, won't women's views always overtake men's views? Because we just well, said first that of all, I think democracy is not the way to go. Okay. What um, is the way to go? We, we don't do democracy very well. <laughs> this is just my pure bias here coming through. I'm very, very big on consensus decision making. To me, it's the only way that really makes sense. Now, bear in mind, consensus does not mean 100% unanimous agreement, but it does mean a hell of a lot more than majority agreement. I explain what that looks like. Consensus decision making is much more than simple majority rule. It's, it's more than a quorum. It is a very, very large majority. And again, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean complete agreement either. There's also consent because consent and agreement are not the same thing. So there are a whole lot of rules when it comes to consensus decision making. But ultimately, it is, in my opinion, a much more sensible way to, to do just about everything <laughs> when it comes to decision making. Does it work on a large scale? For example, what the, the thing that pops in my mind is if the majority of Americans, let's say 75% for the purposes of this analogy, had to agree on a president, we would never have a president. Well, that's another thing. We could, we could talk about that too, because elections are done stupidly in this country as well. We should use a kind of runoff voting system. You, know, you have the number of candidates there. Instead of just picking one, you rank them in your preference. So it's a weighted scale of voting. It's a much fairer kind of thing. To get back to how we would pick the 36, how do I pick which one? See, for mm -hmm. example, uh, and we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, I have been the sole consumer on a great many mental health boards. Mm -hmm. So there'll be 14 people on the board and then Gabe. Those 14 have no lived experience with mental illness, but they say that I'm the representative. Well, Gabe Howard clearly cannot represent all people living with mental illness. That's just ridiculous. My views are because of my lived experience. Right. Well, let's, let's get back to uh, races, as you put it. In fact, let's not even call it races. Let's call it cultures. Clearly, it's, it's unrealistic to have a, a a single representative from each and every different culture on our little board here because that's way too many people. So what you need instead, in my opinion, again, are experts in multiculturalism, ones who have studied these other cultures and can better represent them than an average person could. So you would go for intelligence. Not, See, not this just is intelligence, but knowledge. Knowledge is really the, the key there. You know, I, I talk about my parents a lot. My, my parents are, they're, they're, they're perfectly nice people, but they're not geniuses. But let, let's look at my father. You know, my father didn't learn how to read until he was in his 30s. And I think I'd want my dad there. And you're thinking, well, because he's your father. No, forget about the father connection. Here's why I'd want my dad there. My dad had very little opportunities in life and still came out on top. You know, he had abusive parents. He, he was in rural Ohio. 
he, he didn't have a lot, you know, nobody helped him. He tried to join the military. He was rejected because of his asthma. You know, th this is just a guy that every time he tried to give himself a break, he couldn't get further, but he mm -hmm. still found a way to make it work. That has nothing to do with his intelligence. That has everything to do with his drive. I think I want a guy like that around. I, I think I want a person like that around. He wouldn't let us quit. So I think we, need we might need that. We need cheerleaders. I think we do. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Now we have a purpose for those supermodels. <laughs> hey, everyone. We're going to step away to hear from BetterHelp.com. And while we're doing that, don't forget about our survey that we have going until the end of the year. Just go to PsychCentral.com slash show. Look for the yellow survey button. Click it. Fill it out. We want to hear from you. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. Welcome back, everyone, to the Gabe and Vin Probably Rule the World show. So while we were gone, I gave some thought to what we've been discussing. And I, I don't know, I, I just, I really like having the cheerleaders. <laughs> yes. Okay, but, but there's some other things that we haven't touched on as well. One of the things that I want to touch on, Vin, is how do you feel about having somebody that you just, that you just really disagree with? I mean, somebody that you hate. And, you know, obviously, if somebody is a murderer or an abuser or, you know, a misogynist or a racist, look, they, they can't be in my club. That one's easy. Yeah. But, you know, what about somebody that just really holds a belief that you just really, really, really dislike? It's not illegal. It's not, it's not even necessarily immoral. What do you do then? Well, if that person has an actual valid reason for being chosen anyway, then, you know, suck it up, buttercup, get over that. No, they have, they have no valid reason. They, they don't have, they're, they're, they're not a jerk that's really good at math. They're just, they just hold a belief that you just really hate. Then why would we be considering them in the first place if they don't have a particular value? Because their value might be that they see the world completely differently than we do. That's not Maybe enough of a value. Isn't it? No, it's not. Here's where I get hung up. The truth of the matter is, is people that hold values and thoughts and ideas that I really, really hate, I do not explore them with them. I just say, I, I don't like that. I do not like your value system. So I don't go out of my way to become friends with them. It's quite possible that they're very reasonable and that they're right and that their value will help us especially in this great apocalypse where we're picking 36 leaders. I don't know because I don't have time to track down every single person I disagree with and try to understand them. Of course. Well, they're not trying to find me either. Of course not. Well, this group well, also disagrees with me. So let's say that they, let's say that it's, it's Bob and Jim probably saves the world and they're trying to figure out if they should pick us. Well, they there's, disagree there's with us vehemently. There's absolutely no reason they should pick us. Why? We're really good at this. Let, let's break this down, Gabe. We are not looking for people with particular opinions. We're not looking for people who agree with us. We are looking for experts in certain areas, right? Are we? Why we wouldn't we? That seems to be the only logical way to approach it. Okay. What areas do we need? Well, that, that's a whole another discussion, right? Because there are, frankly, a lot of areas. So we're going to have to whittle those down. And we're going to need to try to be as broad as possible, too. We're going to need a lot of generalists, in my opinion. So you think that we should speak, we should think generally. We don't want people that have a, a niche knowledge. We want people that have broad knowledge to give yes. us the best chance that they are the most useful as possible. Yes, exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Now, in this 36, let's, let's pretend for a moment, you and I are still tasked with the 36, but we will now be the only 36 people left because the world really is ending. <clears throat> Do we pick people we know? 
Well, I, I think we kind of have to because that's kind of our pool of resources there is people we know. Um, how are we, we going to contact people we don't know? Well, we have time. The world's there, not going to end for a year. We, we have oh. a year. We have a year to find these people. Then the, the specific question that I'm asking is, you know, do, do I pick my wife as one of the people? I, I love my wife very much, but she doesn't have broad knowledge on any subject. She doesn't meet the criteria that we talked about in the first half of the show, except that she's a woman. And, and no, I love her. She probably does not want to rule the world. No, no, she probably doesn't. It's, it's, she's way too sweet, but, but I don't, I don't want to go on without her. So this clouds my judgment. And you can see how this has very specific ramifications when you're picking boards for nonprofits, boards for companies, when you're sure, picking I, I groups do. to accomplish tasks. I do get that. But when you, when you change it to say, okay, we're the last 36 people on earth. Well, that's a whole different ball of wax, honestly. She and I can't have children, but she can, just not with me. So do we change our moral standing to repopulate the world? Do we need to repopulate the world? Otherwise, humans would be done. Yeah, we had our run. Look, I'm, I'm this just This is an example that, you of know, you being a downer. You're now no. <laughs> willing to exterminate the human race. No, I think somebody did that before us. Picking any group is filled with psychological pitfalls. Because the truth of the matter is, is I trust the people that I already know, but they're not the best of anything. I, I love all of the people I know very much, but I don't have the best doctor in my family. I don't have the best engineer in my family. I don't have the best survivalist in my family. They're all great people, but they're not the best. And we've just established that we shouldn't pick them. Also, the majority of my family are, is Caucasian. So, you know, I could only pick a couple of people at best, even in my own social circle. Well, you know, you're my best friend, another middle-aged white man. So, frankly, I shouldn't have picked you. Long live the podcast. <laughs> so, th this really did handcuff me because I like to think, like so many people do, that I am fair and that I am balanced and that I value diversity and that I value people who disagree with me. I, I like to think all of these things about myself. And I, I think I do come close, but there is just so much that I don't know. I have a lot of privilege in my life because, well, of my race, my gender, my socioeconomic status, and because of choices that my parents made before I was born. Mm -hmm. All true. So frankly, I'm, I'm not even qualified to pick the 36, I've just realized. That's right. We're not. But nobody is. That is also right. So how do you make the decisions without mucking it up? Well, it's a very deliberate process now, isn't it? As you say, there are a lot of pitfalls, but you've got to be aware of what those pitfalls are. A lot of people don't. They, they don't even think about it. Like you say, there, there's, there's a lot of nepotism and, and favoritism and all of that kind of stuff. So people don't care about being fair all the time when they choose their little groups. But if you're trying to do something like what we've been discussing, you do need to be aware of as much as you can. You do have to have a very broad basis of knowledge for the things that can go wrong in your decision-making process itself. You need to be aware of your biases in all of the choices in, in every way. And that's a tall order. I also think that you need to be aware of the benefits as well as the pitfalls in all of your decisions. I think a lot of times we move forward and we think, oh, this is going to be fantastic. I get to work with my friend. But of course, the, mm -hmm. the downside of that is you now turn your friend into a work colleague. Friendships right. can end. Maybe they're not the best person, but maybe they are the most loyal person. Right. Like, you know, you and I used to be friends before we started doing the show. Oh, yeah. Now I hate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, yep. yeah, yeah, that's awkward. Of course, we also have to acknowledge that you can't be so open-minded that, that your mind falls out. Because like you said, just because somebody disagrees with you doesn't mean they're great for your team. And mm -hmm. just because somebody agrees with you doesn't mean that they're great for your team. Mm -hmm. You have to have some mechanism to evaluate. 
you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't know that I'm sold on the, on the consensus idea that you spoke of earlier, because I tend to think that committees make platypuses because in order for everybody to be happy, you, you just end up with, well, with a platypus. I think a single decision maker could have made something cooler. Committee is a life form with six or more legs and no brain. I, I, I get that. And committees often do make bad decisions. But it's not fair to say that a single decision maker would, would be a better way to go. As I said before, consensus decision making is very involved. And it's not just about majority rules. It is a way of, of communicating with each other, explaining why things should be this way, listening to counter opinions. It's, it's a much fairer and balanced way of, of looking at any kind of an issue. If most of our committees in the world did this, well, we'd have a lot fewer platypuses. I think I can agree with that. I also think what you're saying is, is we would need to pick 36 people that were willing to work together, that didn't have personal agendas. So maybe we're not looking for the top doctor if the top doctor has a personal agenda who would refuse to compromise, who would refuse to work together, who would try to be essentially what you're saying is no narcissists in the 36. <laughs> Even if they were the best at something, we'd be better off getting the second best if that person were a better team player. I'll definitely agree with that, yes. This really made me stop and think of myself as a leader of anything. You know, I, I've, I've, I've been a board president before and I look at the people that, that are on the board and I think, oh man, this would be so much better if you'd all just do it my way. I have personally thought that. But yeah, then what do we need them for? This, this was a mistake on my part. Because again, I, I don't know what I don't know. And by listening to other people, considering their opinions and moving forward together, I've made way more progress in my life. I don't always agree with you. I don't always agree with the guests on this show, but I've learned from everyone. And I think that's the open mind that we need to carry. And finally, disagreement does not equal disrespect. Put people on your group that you disagree with. You can still respect somebody if you don't agree with them. That's right. Vin, I don't like half the books you read, but I like all of the books you've written. <laughs> well, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And remember, you can get one week of convenient, affordable, private online counseling absolutely free anytime, anywhere by visiting betterhelp.com slash psych central. We will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Psych Central Show. Please rate, review and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email talkback at psychcentral.com. 